Mandy wants to overcome her unpopular high school girl image, and her dreams might just come true when Drew Patterson, her long-lasting crush, invites her to a party. Her only obstacle, Tom, her overprotective father, has grounded her, and completely complicated things. Will Mandy be able to reach her goals and finally get everything she has ever wished for? The scene opens with the scenery of a beautiful and rich neighborhood, while Mandy Gilbert, our story's heroine, explains how her world is divided into two worlds, Camelot, the wealthy neighborhood, and Nottingham, where Mandy actually stays. From the get-go, there is an obvious antithesis between the two areas. The neighborhoods go to great lengths to avoid interacting with each other, due to their social differences. Nottingham is swarmed by SWAT. Officers. While Camelot is an area that exudes wealth, the same cannot be said about the other neighborhood. Mandy expresses her fears of never being able to become more than a crusty nobody before graduating high school. As she walks down a hallway, her peers look at her with judgy eyes, validating the girl's worries of not being enough. Mandy reaches the end of the corridor, locking eyes with Drew Patterson, the guy she has been secretly in love with since seventh grade. She longingly reveals how her only wish is for him to just acknowledge her, which shows just how low her standards are. Just as Drew begins to ask for Mandy's number, the alarm clock abruptly wakes the girl from her dream. The only tool that might help Mandy in her road to becoming popular is the video phone. The issue is her loving, yet overprotective father. Since her mother died when she was four, her father has been extra careful of her. His overbearing ways are a coping mechanism. While her dad drives Mandy to school, he starts up a conversation about her 18th birthday coming up, and teasingly tells her about how he might have some surprises for her. He is interrupted by Mandy's phone ringing. Alexa, her friend, is calling her, trying to tell her something but the cell's buzzing and tweaking is making that impossible. Frustrated that she still has to put up with the outdated phone, Mandy hangs up. She pointedly looks at her dad and argues that she needs a new phone, preferably one that she can take pictures and videos with. She is one of the only one in school without a new phone, and her social life is suffering because of it. She also brings up that she does not want to be called kid anymore, seeing how she will soon be an adult. Her friends, Alexa and Kayan, call her again as she walks into the school. They all gush over Drew and how great he is. Entranced by his presence, Mandy stops in the middle of the hallway to gaze at Drew. Lisa, Drew's girlfriend notices this, and patronizingly tells her friends that she thinks it's adorable, how Mandy thinks she has a chance with her boyfriend. Lisa forcefully pushes into Mandy, which makes the girl lose her balance and fall. She is sprawled all over the floor, and when she bends down to put her things back into her bag, the back of her underwear can be seen. Lisa pulls out her phone and starts recording Mandy. She zooms in on her underwear, and calls them granny panties. The video is seen by the entire school in no time, and everyone laughs at Mandy's expense. Her friends try to console her, and tell her that Drew is not worth the trouble anyway. Not only is he dating Lisa, the meanest girl in school, but he is also upper middle class and from a gated community. He is obviously way above Mandy's league, seeing as how she is still trying to climb her way up to middle class. However, the girl does not listen to Kian's ramblings. Stopping at her tracks, she gets the ingenious idea of joining the swim team, so she can get Drew to finally notice her. On Mandy's way to swim practice, her friends playfully tease her. It is obvious that they don't think her plan is going to work, but Mandy remains persistent in her efforts. They reach the pool, and suddenly stop to watch Drew get out of it. As she struggles to catch up to him, Mandy drops her glasses, forcing her to crawl around and look for them. She finally finds them, but when she tries to stand up, she hits her head against the bottom of a lifeguard chair, knocking her out completely. The girl once again loses her balance, and falls into the water, unconscious. Luckily for her, she is saved by none other than Drew, who gives her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. As she hazily wakes up, she points out Drew's hands on her chest, telling him it would be a good idea to remove them, because they are on school property, and it is inappropriate. Later that day, Mandy recounts to Alexa what happened at swim practice, while they're both at work. Alexa tries to tell her that he was just being a decent human being, saving someone when they needed help. Kayan calls the girls and warns Mandy to hide, because Lisa is just about to enter the store. She ducks behind the counter, but Lisa already saw her. The mean girl begins to talk down to Mandy, and makes fun of her hair and workplace. After Lisa walks off, Drew apologizes on her behalf. He asks Mandy if she is feeling any better, and she reassures him that she is okay now, after thanking him. They both nervously look at each other, and their demeanor borders on flirtatiousness. They share their plans for after high school, and Drew confesses to Mandy that he does not want to study at a business school. He quickly changes the subject. He asks Mandy for help regarding his cat. She has the perfect solution for him, and tells him exactly what to do to help his cat feel better. Drew thanks her, and tells her that he'll see her around. Just as he turns around to leave the store, Mandy nervously speaks up, and asks him where exactly he'll see her around. They make plans to hang out together after school the next day. The next morning, as Mandy gets out of her room for breakfast, she can't help but notice the new phone perched on her father's desk. Her dad comes up to her. He reveals that he bought her the phone for her birthday, and he even bought one for himself. Thanking him over and over, Mandy excitedly hugs him. 
He also got her contacts so she can stop wearing her glasses. Mandy thanks him once again, but surprisingly, there is one present left for her. Tom reveals that he has been working on a duplex for the two of them to move into after Mandy starts college. That way, they can still be close to one another. Mandy does not seem pleased by this last surprise, but she decides not to tell him anything. When meeting up with Alexa and Kian, Mandy tells them about her father's plan. She explains how she couldn't bring herself to tell him how much she disliked the idea, especially not after he bought her the phone. As Mandy goes to wait for Drew, Alexa and Kian walk around aimlessly, waiting for the right moment to put their plan into motion. Kayen tells Alexa that she is worried about Mandy. She fears that Drew was not being sincere when he asked her out, and she does not want to see Mandy get hurt because of him. They suddenly bump into Drew, who asks them if they have seen Mandy anywhere around. Alexa gets tongue-tied as she sees him, but thankfully Kayen steps in and tells Drew where she is. Mandy, while waiting for Drew, takes a bite out of a nacho chip that is fully coated in salsa sauce. What she does not realize is that the sauce is extremely spicy. Burning her mouth with it, she quickly gets up to search for some water so she can cool down, but soon gets desperate and drinks directly from the jug full of juice. In that moment, Drew shows up and snaps a picture of Mandy. He doesn't seem to be disgusted, but rather impressed with her. He playfully teases her and offers to buy her an actual drink while they wait for their food. They seem to be having a good time. Drew tells her how pathetic some of his colleagues from the swim team are. They only tried out to get the girls from the next pool over to actually notice them. Knowing that it is exactly what she did to get Drew to notice her, Mandy awkwardly laughs. He compliments her laugh and complains about Lisa, who never laughs but does scream very often. Mandy looks confused and asks him how he knows that, but she soon interprets that as something inappropriate. Drew interrupts her ramblings by clarifying that she often screams when they watch scary movies. To save her from any further embarrassment, he brings the attention to her new phone. He cracks a joke when he sees a photo of her father that Mandy took that morning. Drew suddenly asks Mandy if she wants to meet up with him later at the lake. When Mandy asks about Lisa, Drew tells her not to worry about it. They agree to hang out later at the lake. At the house, Tom's sister comes over to visit her brother, along with her son and groceries she bought for Tom. She wastes no time in reprimanding Tom about his overprotectiveness and reminds him that Mandy is going to have to move away for college at some point. Tom, in return, reminds her of his duplex plan. It doesn't matter if Mandy is moving away, because he will be right behind her. He also tells her about the new phones he bought for the two of them and the advantages of always being aware of what Mandy is doing, and who she is doing it with. Tom's sister is absolutely flabbergasted by his actions, and begs to give Mandy some freedom, because she is not a little girl anymore. Tom is insistent that he knows what he's doing, but his sister knows him better than that. Mandy, Alexa and Kian arrive at the lake. Mandy looks around for Drew, but she does not see him anywhere. Little does she know, he is hiding behind some trees, taking photos of her. She tries to ask some girl if she's seen him around, but the girl rudely scoffs at her and walks away. Just as Mandy is about to turn around and leave, Drew calls her and tells her to look towards her left. She finally sees him and goes up to him so she can give him a hug. Her phone drops to the ground, but she doesn't notice it. A few meters away, one of Lisa's friends sees Mindy and Drew hugging, immediately sending Lisa a video of it. Lisa sees the video and angrily drives off in her luxurious car. As they walk around the lake, Mandy stops and asks Drew why he wants to hang out with her out of everyone, especially seeing as she is not wealthy or popular like the rest of them. He tells her that that is the exact reason why. He likes that she's not like everyone else. Drew feels like he can be himself around her. He also really likes her eyes, but he gets confused as to why he has to explain why he finds her hot. Mandy is shocked that he actually thinks that about her and is extremely flattered. Lisa arrives at the lake just in time to see Mandy and Drew hug again. Mandy's phone starts ringing, drawing Lisa's attention to it. She picks it up and answers the call. She realizes that she's speaking to Mandy's dad, so she films Mandy and Drew so her father can see them. Mandy sees what's happening and rushes over to take back her phone. Her dad asks her where she is, but she lies to him. He doesn't believe her and demands a photo of where she is. Realizing that she is lying, he tells her to be at home in 10 minutes. Drew stops her before she leaves and officially asks her to go out with him to set a night's party. She giddily accepts. When she gets home, Mandy is immediately grounded by her father. Mandy tries to convince him to let her go to the party, but he refuses to do so. The next morning, Tom goes up to Mandy's room to wake her up and hears a buzzing noise. He asks her what it is and she lies, saying that it's her toothbrush. Mandy answers the phone after she thinks that her dad left, but he catches her talking to Drew. He takes her phone away so she can't talk to anybody. As an act of rebellion, Mandy packs up her backpack with an outfit for the party. She goes downstairs to ask her dad if he could let her go to Alexa's house because they have a project to do for a class. He doesn't believe her and she tries to guilt trip him but that doesn't work either. Just as she is about to leave, her dad asks if Alexa's mom is going to be there. Manny confirms that she will be there to supervise them, so her dad lets her go and even gives her phone back. 
The only condition is that she can only receive calls from him, and he will call her every half hour. As she walks out the front door, Tom threatens Mandy that if she lies to him again, he won't let Mandy go away for college, and she will be forced to go to junior college in their hometown. Outside, Lisa and her friends spy on Mandy. They follow her until Mandy pulls up at Alexa's house. Lisa is convinced that Mandy is up to something, when she doesn't take the backpack with her. She asks her friends to give her nail scissors, before going to Mandy's car. Kayan greets the girls and takes Alexa aside to show her something. They watch a video of Drew talking to another boy about Mandy, saying that he plans to hump then dump her. Kayan says that Drew asked Mandy out, so he can follow his family tradition of deflowering a girl in the shower. All of his brothers did it, and now it's his turn. Kayan wants to tell Mandy about it, but Alexa tells her to keep her mouth shut and let her dream. Mandy walks up to them and reminds them that her dad is going to call her any minute now, and Alexa's mom is still not home. They make a plan to find a video of Alexa's mom and use it. When her dad asks her to show Alexa's mom, the recording shows her getting ready in the bathroom, yelling to get out. Tom quickly hangs up after that. When the girls go to Mandy's car to take the backpack, Mandy finds her dress shredded to bits. She stares at it in disbelief, but quickly decides to just get a new, better outfit. As they walk into the mall, Lisa spots them. Knowing that she will have an allergic reaction to them, she plans to get Mandy to drink a smoothie with macadamia nuts in it. Not knowing what's in it, Maddie does indeed drink one and her face swells up. She also gets a call from her dad, but she prepared a video in advance, where they seem to be studying. Lisa and her friends see Mandy's face and start hysterically laughing. As the girls walk through the mall, kids get scared and start screaming when they see Mandy's face. They stop at a fountain so Mandy can take some medicine for her allergy, but she takes too much and ends up falling asleep. She loses her balance and falls into the pool. After Lisa and her friends come up to them to intimidate Mandy, she gets out of the pool, but her face looks normal again. Just as they start leaving, Mandy finds the perfect dress. She gets a call from her dad, but the reception is weak. Tom says that he'll just call Alexa's landline. The girls run around, trying to get good reception before he realizes that they're not at home. Mandy calls him just as Tom was about to get suspicious of them. The girls manage to make a little set at a furniture store, so it looks like they're home. Tom looks a little weirded out by them, but he believes Mandy. Outside in the mall's parking lot, Mandy's car is being towed. Lisa sends her friend to spy on Mandy. When the girls walk up to the car, they run towards the guy who's towing it and ask him to stop. But he tells them to pick it up in an hour after they pay $300. Mandy is panicking because she doesn't have the money. She sees a little pamphlet on the ground for Battle of the Bands where they could win a cash prize. They get to the club and just before they have to get on the stage, Alexa has a panic attack. Mandy manages to calm her down. They walk up on the stage and Alexa goes up to the microphone as Kayan sits down at the drums. Mandy cheers them on from the sidelines. Alexa panics once again, walks off the stage, and says she can't do it. She asks Mandy to sing in her place. She starts singing, and the crowd goes wild. Mandy sees the clock. She has just a few minutes left, before her dad calls again. She shouts at the crowd to quiet down, and explains her situation to them. Tom calls and asks Mandy what they're doing. She tells him that they're watching a DVD of a movie. He asks her to send him a video of the movie. Mandy shows the crowd what to do, and they help her out. Tom notices that the clock in the movie shows the exact same time as his clock. He gets suspicious and asks Mandy to let the video play a little longer than pause it. The crowd stops exactly when Mandy tells them to, so Tom seems to accept what she tells him. After Mandy hangs up, the crowd cheers, and Mandy resumes her singing. Lisa's friend is also in the crowd, and reports everything to Lisa. Back at Mandy's house, Tom's sister drops off her son for Tom to babysit. At the club, Lisa sees Mandy walk out, looking dolled up in her new dress. She calls the gatekeeper at Camelot's entrance, and tells him not to let Mandy in. While Tom is babysitting his nephew, the kid picks up the duplex design and runs away with it, which stresses Tom out. When the girls arrive at Camelot, the goalkeeper warns Mandy that if she doesn't leave, he is going to call the cops. As soon as they leave, the man reports back to Lisa. Lisa calls Tom and asks where Mandy is. He tells her that she is at Alexa's house. She tells him that it seems weird, because she was supposed to be at the party an hour ago, bringing the drinks. She hangs up before Tom can ask questions. Tom immediately calls Mandy, but she is driving, so she can't pick up right away. Tom hears a car honking and asks if she's driving, but she tells him that she's just searching for a CD. She turns on the video call and shows him her hands and car keys to prove that she's not driving. Tom feels guilty for not believing her. After he hangs up, the girls almost crash the car into a truck, but avoid it at the last second. Tom's nephew destroys the duplex template. Alexa and Kayan ask Mandy to stop trying to get to the party, but Mandy refuses to give up. Tom tries to get his nephew to sit still, so he won't destroy anything else. He puts on a DVD of his late wife giving birth to Mandy. Full of bittersweet grief, he looks at the screen. The video shows Mandy growing up. He realizes that he needs to give Maddie a little more freedom. Mandy and the girls try to get past the gatekeeper again. 
He doesn't recognize them, and they make it in. Tom is trying to repair the duplex model, but can't concentrate because of his nephew. He catches him jumping on the bed. Tom tries to distract him by playing hide and seek together. Mandy, Alexa and Kayan finally get to the party, but before they can join it, they see Lisa standing besides Drew, wearing the same dress as Mandy. Alexa tells Mandy about the video, and warns her of Drew's plans. Kayan intervenes, and tells Mandy that she should go for it, especially after what they survived today. She encourages Mandy to go after Drew, and modifies her dress. As Tom searches for his nephew around the house, he gets a call from his sister. She asks about her son, and Tom lies and says that he's sleeping, because he can't find him. His sister doesn't believe him, and asks him to turn on the video call. He hangs up, and frantically searches for his nephew, before his sister calls back. He can't find him, and tries to trick his sister into believing him that her son is asleep. After he hangs up, he seems disappointed in himself. He finally manages to find his nephew, after promising to be a better uncle. He picks up the phone to call Mandy, but he decides to let her have a little freedom. Mandy steps out of the bushes she was hiding behind, and confidently walks towards Drew. They go into the house, where they softly sway to the music. They share a beautiful moment, and Drew asks her to go somewhere more intimate. Mandy seems reluctant to follow. Instead, she calls her dad, planning to tell him everything. She changes her mind after having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him, too guilty to admit what she's done. She goes upstairs after Drew. Mandy walks around the room, and looks at the photos Drew took over the years. She stumbles upon a picture of herself, and Drew says that it's his favorite. Alexa and Kayan spy on Lisa and her friends. They catch them while they are in the middle of a ritual. Convinced that Lisa is a witch, they try to stop her. Alexa sneaks into the room and begins filming. She catches the exact moment when Lisa throws up all over herself. Mandy and Drew sit together on the couch. Drew makes up an excuse and goes to the bathroom. He turns on the sink to wash his hands, and Mandy thinks that he turned on the shower so he can continue the tradition his family has. When Drew walks out of the bathroom, Mandy is gone. Back at the party, the video of Lisa vomiting is playing on the big screen, and everyone is laughing at her. Giggling at their success, Alexa and Kayan walk up to the car, but get worried when they see Mandy's sad face. Mandy gets home, ready for an interrogation from her father. He surprises her by not asking anything. Instead, he says that he needs to let her go and grow up by herself. He shows her the new duplex plan, which has been modified to be for a single person. He apologizes for being overbearing. Comforting him, she says that she knows he did it because he loves her. They hug and share a heartwarming moment. At prom, Mandy is walking towards her friends, and doesn't notice Drew looking at her. Just as he and Lisa were about to be crowned as prom king and queen, Drew leaves Lisa behind, and takes Mandy to the stage with him, instead. He chooses her as his prom queen, and they kiss in front of everyone, with the crowd cheering them on.